the fuck is that? All right, Bar Natural Press, talk to the people, man. Let them know what's getting ready to Bro, go down. Those are not push ups, don't get it twisted. All right, guys, look, I'm gonna be bringing you today the common mistakes I see people performing push ups, right? Look, remember, a calisthenic exercise is supposed to be a full body movement. I said it a hundred times. Full body movement means every body part and every limb should be working in sync, in unison, full energy being dispersed throughout the body. If there's a break in the chain, if there's a break in the hips or a loose limb, there's gonna be a break in the kinetic chain. That means energy is gonna be being dispersed and you're not gonna be push, pushing out maximal effort. You're also gonna be setting yourself up for imbalance and improper movement patterns, which are gonna lead to injury. So if you guys saw that intro, look man, you guys see people doing push-ups like that all the time. I see it all the time, I see it in competitions and I don't understand why I see it so often. Look, like I said, everything is a full body movement. Your body's supposed to move together, right? So when you see people doing push-ups with their ass sunk down and their chest up like this, right? All they're doing is putting stress on their low back and working imbalances in improper push-up form, right? Let me show you guys what a full proper push-up is supposed to look like. Look, when I say full body movement, you want your body to be moving in a line, right? Look. I'm in a perfect line. Every muscle is flexed. When I say full body movement, I'm squeezing my glutes. I'm squeezing my hamstrings. My feet are together. Look, I go down one line, come up one line. Down one line, up one line. None of this, right? No going just the chest down where my butt sticks up and you're doing this or none of this where the butt's down and you're just moving the upper body up. Breaking the chain, sloppy form setting yourself up for injuries and you're teaching the nervous system improper movement patterns so the first thing i always like to teach people is listen when you learn push-ups or if you watch my pull-up video i don't know if it's going to be posted yet form form is key setup is key when you're getting down onto that floor boom boom whether you're on a bar or floor it doesn't matter you start look this is bad right why because my butt is up that means i have no engagement of my lower body. There's no movement or no energy being dispersed. There's no flexion of any muscles in my lower body. My core is embraced. That means no movement and no energy can be brought up throughout the whole body. So let me demonstrate. You'll see people setting up like this and they'll start to go down like this, right? My butt is up, my butt is not flexed. Look at the difference. Now everything is squeezed. Everything is in one line, moving down same plane of motion my whole body moves up together moves down moves up so setup is key guys you get on the floor you want to have your shoulders stacked just above your hands you don't want to be too far forward the further your shoulders are over your hands the more shoulder focused exercise is going to be similar to like doing plank or pseudo push-ups where your hands are here and you're really leaning forward and then you're coming down like this when your shoulders are too far forward, you're taking the stress off the chest and placing more on the delts. And if you guys aren't ready, really good at regular push-ups, you have no business trying pseudo push-ups. You're just gonna hurt yourself. So you wanna have your hands stacked, shoulders just above your hands. Now, if your shoulders are back here, look what's gonna happen. You cannot do a proper push-up, right? You want your shoulders stacked just above your hands. And another common mistake I see a lot of people do is the flaring of the elbows, right? Look, guys, let me demonstrate. A push-up position, you guys can practice this standing. Look at the angle. This is bad, right? This is gonna put too much stress on the shoulders and the rotator cuff. This is a rotator cuff exercise when your shoulder joints are at 90 degrees, right? That's shoulder work. You wanna focus on more chest. You're now bringing your arms to a, about a 45 degree angle. So as opposed to being here, elbows come down tighter to the body, elbows come back, and you shoot your hands forward, right? Now remember, being on a bar, you're fixed. So you're only moving like this. You guys watch, that's why I say rings, very beneficial tool to utilize for doing push-ups because the rings are gonna give you freedom to bring the humerus across the body and get a deeper contraction of the chest. Regardless, form's gotta stay the same. And if you guys can't do floor push-ups, you have no business being on the rings because the rings are gonna require a lot more muscle activation from the stabilizer and core activation. So look guys, you do not wanna see flared out elbows like this if you're flaring out your elbows like this you're putting way too much i won't even demonstrate it like that because it's and right away too much stress on the shoulder joint you're impinging the rotator cuff 
and you're not working on the chest and you're teaching your body improper mechanics. So remember, you wanna stay on that 45 degree angle, feet together, everything tight. Look where my elbows come, here. See that position, guys? My chest is now fully, fully flexed, fully stretched. And look, my chest is hovering the floor. It's about one inch over the floor. I come up in one line. Now look, guys, if I was to go down and touch the floor like this, I now lost full uh, resistance in the chest, right? I lost tension in the chest because now the floor is there and I have no more flexion or tension in the chest muscle. So when you see people doing push-ups, once they hit the floor here, they're losing tension and they're now generating momentum by trying to get their chest to bounce off the floor, right? Now, if you could perform the reps with proper form, there's a time and a place when trying to add momentum. If you're in a competition, they will count every rep that your chest hits. They'll say they, they'll usually have a water bottle there or their fist and they'll say you have to touch your fist to the chest for the make, to make the rep count, right? Anything there, any type of um, object that's going to stop the chest and allow a little bit of a bounce back will generate momentum. So if you're utilizing a bar or the chest to the floor for momentum, for more repetitions, it's okay. But remember, you want to make sure you're still doing the repetitions with good form. You don't want them to look like this. Okay, now look at my butt, guys. Butt is down, just the chest is up, too much stress on the shoulders. Just look at this simple fix. From coming here to here now, look. From here, the shoulders are still too far over the hands. Once I squeeze everything now, I can still get that momentum, but everything's working in one line. You're squeezing the glutes, keeping everything contracted. Like I said, every exercise in calisthenics is gonna be a core movement, right? Because in order for you to keep this line, you guys gotta learn flexion and how to squeeze the glutes. Squeezing the glutes and the hamstrings together are gonna be key when doing all these movements. We're gonna teach you to brace here, squeeze in here, everything tight. So again, number one common mistake I see, breaking the form, breaking the hips. Second one I see, too many people flaring their elbows out. Third mistake, people trying to utilize momentum in the wrong way. Now, another very big mistake I see people make, besides keeping the butt sunk down, which I kind of demonstrated before, now it's gonna be where they're only moving their upper body. You'll typically see people doing this when they're doing push-ups on a bar, right? A lot of people nowadays, they'll build a push-up bar like this to give them a little bit more height off the floor. The bar's down low like this, it's really not gonna be that much of a difference. You're splitting hairs, but the higher the surface that you're doing the push-ups on, so if you've got a bar that's here. Let's it's demonstrate, be, let's demonstrate over here. It's gonna be way back. easier, yeah, let's go. We'll come back here though, okay. We'll come back here. Bring it over. I'd rather do less trips. Okay. What's up, Henry? So look, you'll see a lot of people um, push up all people build them themselves, right? You'll see a lot of people set up like this when they're only bringing down. Press, press. I'm sorry. Put your body on this. Oh, you want me on this side? Yeah, yeah. So look, you'll see a lot of people doing push-ups where they're only dropping their torso. So look, the butt's up, and then they go down like this. Look what I'm doing, guys. All I'm doing is dropping the torso down, not moving the butt, not utilizing the lower body. It all comes down to engagement. And you'll see it even more when people try to go on higher reps and make the push-ups easier. But now look, the higher the bar, the easier the repetition. Look guys, if I'm on this bar, look what my range of motion is. From here, all the way down to here, all the way up, right? But now if I'm on this bar, my range of motion only gets to here. So as instead of me being able to squeeze back to here, I'm about here. Now if I go to the high bar, it's even less range of motion. I'm here to here, way less range of motion. So the higher the bar or the higher the object that you're trying to do push-ups on, the easier they're gonna be, but now, what happens when you're on a surface like this is now your body's on more of an incline, right? You have to learn how much easier is it to do this now. You see the difference, guys? I'm just... You guys think you're doing push-ups, but all you're doing is hinging at the hips and breaking up, right? You guys see a lot of people doing dips. Same thing, look. 
you guys watch, I posted a video on my channel talking about this. Look guys, proper dip form. Remember, these are short dip bars, right? So it's impossible for me to keep my legs straight and go through a full range of motion dip. But you can still do it with proper form. All you gotta do guys, look, proper form would be doing the whole rep with my legs like this. But all I'm gonna do is bend my knees back. I'm still in a line, dropping down, locking out, right? What you'll see people do, You see the difference there, guys? Look, I'm able to keep my legs straight and still do a dip. How so? Because you're not doing a full dip. You're just moving your upper body. Now you'll see people try to strap on weight, right? So let's just say, for instance, someone's got a 25 pound plate on them. Let's just say you're trying to do 25 pound weighted dips, right? So now if I have that 25 pound weight on, right? I'm holding here, I'm locked out. That weight is hanging right there, right? So if I'm doing dips like this, you think that weight is moving? No, because your legs aren't moving. But now, if you're doing real dips, look where my knees are, look where my knees end, right? So that means the weight is being lowered, then the weight is being lifted. If I'm just doing dips like this, how could that weight be dropping down? It can't be, right? So you're not doing weighted dips. The only time you have weight is when you're at lockout. You're not actually moving that weight through the full range of motion. Same thing for push-ups, guys. So look, it all comes down to form. Push-ups are a basic body weight calisthenic exercise. Staple that you guys should practice. It's one of the first movements you guys should learn when trying to get better at body weight training. It's gonna teach you that core alignment. It's gonna teach you how to bring your body and work in one full range of motion. Remember, guys, one more time. Demonstrate proper form. I'm gonna go on this side. And I'll demonstrate proper form on all three bars, guys, look. And I'll start on the floor, look. All the same. The floor, one line, right? Now we're gonna move up to the bar. If you're doing it on the bar, guys, remember, same thing. Shoulders stack over the hands. So look, if I was back here on the bar and try to do a push-up, what's gonna happen? It's gonna force me to flare my elbows because your shoulders are too far back. If I'm up here and my shoulders are up here, what's gonna happen? I'm gonna be coming down to here. It's gonna almost force me to drop my hips put more stress on the shoulder. Shoulders right above the hands, stacked. Body moves down in one line, up in one line. Same thing, guys. The higher you go on the bar, you still maintain that shoulder stacked over the hands. You bring it down. Look at my elbows, guys. This is normal positioning. This would be flared out, right? You never want to be here. You want to maintain that 45 degree angle. Push up, whole body moves. Same thing, guys. You come to the easiest bar. Boom, butt down. Push, lock out. Look at the angle of the elbows. Boom. Not here. Not flaring out. The second you start flaring out and doing push-ups like that, focusing more on the shoulder joint and pinching, it's also gonna fuck up the uh, the rotator cuff and the, can't even think of the muscle group right now, drawing blanks. But um, basically guys, you never wanna be in that 90 degree shoulder position when doing push-ups. And let me just show you guys, look, if you guys are having struggling, trouble with push-ups on even bars like this, let me show you guys, look, I have numerous clients that are very big guys, right? So remember with calisthenics, your body weight is always the intensity. Remember, intensity always refers to load. So if you're 300 pounds, you gotta do a 300 pound push-up. If you're starting in the gym and you wanna train your chest, right? You ain't, if you're a beginner, you ain't gonna go and bench 300, but if you wanna do a push-up and you're 300 pounds, you gotta move your whole weight, right? You gotta move 300 pounds. So now look, one of my favorite ways to teach clients and to build up that push strength is I love to find a railing just like this, right? Now guys, everything is always form. Legs together. Look guys, I'm starting already in that line, right? My body's in a line. But look, this is gonna be the easiest range of motion. This guy's gonna teach you how to get deep. You're gonna be able to go deep here. And then I want you guys, almost everyone I train could do these. And you're just gonna work a little bit of an explosive push. And if you can't even do the explosive, come here, but it's gonna allow you to get deep. Because now look, instead of having to be all the way down, you're pretty much vertical still. And all you gotta do is lean forward, keep that line, push up. The benefit that I want you guys to get to of the explosive reps is now it's going to teach you to catch yourself low in the deepest part of the rep and push out explosively. So this explosive, strength that you build just on this bar right here will have a great translation over 
to doing full and deeper reps on a bar like that. All right, Press, what's the, what's a mistake that people can make doing that? What's a mistake they might make? Show them, you know, what's the mistakes Same that you thing, see. Guys, you guys, look, it's very easy to, again, just moving the upper body. Oh, look, guys, it's very simple fix. I'm gonna set up correctly. Look, this is proper form, right? Body's moving down, body's moving back together. Very easy for me to fuck this form up by just leaning back, right? Leaning back more, and then trying to put more emphasis, thinking you're putting more on the upper body, but you're not. You're taking all the lower body engagement out. You're now hinging at the hips. Remember, there is not one exercise in calisthenics, pretty much, that's gonna be a hinging exercise, unless you're doing deadlifts or squats, pull-ups, push-ups, dips, handstand push-ups, all are supposed to be done straight body alignment, no break in the hips. The second there's a break in the hips, that means no engagement of the glutes, right? So every time you guys are doing any type of exercise, make sure you're starting and set up correctly. Feet together, glutes squeezed, everything locked out straight. And look guys, for this, obviously you're not gonna be able to have your shoulders stacked over. Because if you have your shoulders stacked over your hands on this bar, you can't do push up, right? So like I said, you're gonna step back a little bit. Your shoulders are gonna be on an angle now. You don't wanna be too wide, guys. Shoulder width apart to slightly outside shoulder width apart. Set up, whole body moves, shoot up, whole body shoots up, whole body comes down. Whole body shoots up, whole body comes down. Whole body shoots up, whole body comes down. And working on those explosive repetitions, it's gonna help you guys really build up those type two explosive muscle fibers that again, are gonna translate over. Again, you have to start on the high bar, it's gonna translate over, getting you from here to here. Because now you're gonna be able to, remember, like I said, the eccentric portion of the rep, you guys could always handle more load. So if you guys are able to explosively push out on that bar, when you come down and you have to catch yourself, your body weight, your load coming down fast like that is even more intense than doing a regular push up because now you're coming down faster. You have to control the gravity that you're, that's pushing your body down and it's teaching you how to be more explosive and stronger out of the strong, out of the hardest part of the movement, which is the bottom por portion, which is usually the sticking point for most people. So again, guys, how many mistakes I see people making form breakdown flaring out the elbows only moving one part of their body or their torso trying to keep their chest up using the floor for momentum and again setting up wrong stacking the shoulders too far forward or keeping them too far back are all going to set you up for wrong muscle groups and wrong pattern of movement that you guys want to train the nervous system so when learning push-ups like i said guys it's a staple beginner movement that all of you guys should master they're not that complicated it is a compound movement for your uh, chest. Remember guys, compound movements involve two joint angles being worked. When you're doing a push up, you're getting movement in the shoulder joint and the elbow joint. So it's a compound movement. Isolation movements refer to movements that only use one joint angle. So if we were doing flies for our chest with cables or dumbbells or uh, bands, only joint movement is coming from the shoulder. So it's an isolation. But now if we were doing bench press or shoulder, or a press with the bands. You're now having movement at the elbow and the shoulder, making the compound movement. Compound movements are always known to be more beneficial. They're gonna require more muscle recruitment, more overall nervous system activation, and they're typically gonna be the harder movements to do than isolations. So like I said, guys, hope you enjoyed this routine. Practice your push-ups. Push they're not a hard exercise to learn, and they're a staple for anybody learning calisthenics or any type of fitness. They can be done anywhere. You don't need any equipment. You literally could drop down in the middle of the street, or let's just say I'm walking down the street or the sidewalk. I want to get a pump. Oh, let's just bang out. I could have kept going, but I didn't want to. But look, guys, you guys want to get a quick pump before an event, you go on to the beach. When you get out the car in the parking lot, drop down, give yourself a 40, 50 clip. You're going to get a nice pump. Your chest is going to look swole. You walk around looking good, guys. But make sure you do the movement right. Because if you don't do the movement right, you ain't going to get that pump in your chest that you want. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you got any questions, leave them in the comment section. Myself or G will get back to you with a response. Hope you guys enjoyed this. Don't forget, like the video, share the video to help the algorithm out a lot. Make sure you subscribe to That's Good Money. Make sure you subscribe to my channel at Bar Naturals. You can search me on Instagram too, Bar Natural Prez. If you guys are interested in any programs I got, you can check out my website, barnaturalfitness.com. And uh, like always, guys, hope you enjoyed this. Peace out.
Bar Naturals. Thanks a lot, Press. How long was that one? Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs>